Equia hated her life. Her husband, Nana, was a, a deadbeat. He simply couldn't do anything right. He owed almost everyone in the village. His kids could not go to school because he owed school fees from previous terms. Uh, when anyone in the family fell sick, he would take them anywhere but the hospital because there was an outstanding bill there too. Nana's salary was never enough. He had expensive tastes. He spent his money on fine things. Often he would take money from Equia's purse to fund his gambling and drinking. He wasn't above dipping his hands into his children's saving jars either, just so he could have a good time on a Friday night. Equia complained and complained, but nothing ever changed. Nana just got worse and worse. The children got hungrier and dirtier and more illiterate. To cover up for his inadequacies, Nana kept lying to his wife and child about the reality of their situation. <laughs> but they were not fools. They knew the truth. Whenever Equia confronted Nana with her concerns, he would always remind her that things were not always this bad, you know, he used to be rich. He used to take good care of all of them and the fact that he had fallen on hard times did not mean he was incapable of rising again. He just needed time. Things would be great again. But Hikuya had had enough. The last straw was when Nana announced that in spite of his debts, his dirty compound, his unhealthy children and his unhappy wife, he was going to throw a massive birthday party to celebrate his life. Equia gave up entirely on him and left. Now, on the other side of town, Michael, the rich playboy, had pity on Equia and gave her a place to stay. He knew what a hard time she had been having and decided to give her uh, somewhere to live out of the goodness of his heart. He gave her food, new clothes, a car. He even opened a small tabletop provision shop for her and told her he would give serious thoughts to making her his second wife. Equia was elated. She would much rather be a second wife to a man who could take care of her than an only wife of a, a man who couldn't even take care of himself. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, months into years, and the marriage never happened. Michael paid much less attention to her than he used to. His first wife hated Equia, made her do all the most degrading chores in the house. The first wife would eat to her fill before handing the scraps to Equia and her children. Equia complained to Michael, but he just didn't care enough to do anything about it. To him, Equia was a charity case that he took in out of pity. He never promised to marry her. He just said he would consider it. He didn't need her. He already had a wife. If she was uncomfortable, she could always leave. Equia started to wonder if she hadn't been too hasty in leaving Nana. After all, Nana did have potential. He was having tough times, making bad decisions. Should she not have helped him instead of complaining and eventually leaving? Should she not have grabbed him by the lapels and dragged him to his feet? Should she not have set rules and forced him to stick to them? Should she not have kept an eagle eye on his salary and controlled his expenses and watched how he spent the little money that he made? Should she not have you know, taken more responsibility and stepped in where he was failing to ensure things turned around for the benefit of her and her children? After all, he was her husband, her own, and he needed her. So, my friend, where, where am I going with this story? Well, I want you to imagine for a moment that you are Ikea, and that Nana, the deadbeat husband, is your country, Ghana. Michael, the rich man across town, is some foreign developed country like the USA or the UK. And, of course, his first wife, represents uh, that developed country's indigenous citizens. Now, I, I, I do understand the frustration we often have with our own nation and its failings. And you can see what I'm talking about. Dirty compound, you know, we have sanitation problems. Uh, you know, the, the inability to spend, uh, li live within you, our means, that's Ghana. You know, inability to, um, to make enough revenue to look after the health and education needs of our citizens. Yeah, that's Ghana. And Michael's situation is definitely what we see and perceive to be the situation of foreign countries. But much as some other country may seem attractive, it is not your home. And you will always be a third-class citizen there. You will only ever benefit from their scraps after they have eaten to their fill. But your country is yours forever. And it needs you. Ghana needs you 
to stand up and drag it up with you. Ghana needs you to speak up against all the wrong that you see in society. Ghana needs you to force its leaders to do the right thing and account for every single resource that passes through their hands. Ghana needs you to speak truth to power and make sure that those responsible for solving our problems can never get away with doing anything but their best. After all, it's the only country you've got. Just like Nana is the only husband Ifia has got. And just like Nana needs Ifia, Ghana needs you. My name is Kojo Yangsen and Ghana is my home. So my job is to scrub it spotless and keep it that way. Good morning, Ghana folks.